Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to watch Kenya's number one debate platform as we continue the search for the great debaters. I'm your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperanza Kapanga. And today we are discussing a critical problem in our society today, poverty, with the motion being poverty eradication can only be achieved by offering quality education. Proposing this motion, we have Don Bosco Secondary School who promised to bring their A-game. And opposing the motion is the Confident California Secondary School. Proposal number one, you have three minutes to make a statement. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most essential tool to change the world. The phrase change the world may sound ambiguous, but it has eradication of poverty in its fold. My name is Samira Mohammed Hashi from Don Bosco Secondary School, ready to propose the motion that states poverty can be eradicated by providing quality education. Poverty, poverty, poverty. What's poverty? As spelled in the Wikipedia, poverty is having no or little material possession or living below one dollar a day. And what's eradication of poverty? Eradication of poverty is measures taken permanently to end poverty. Education reduces economic inequality. How does it reduce? If people are taken from a poor background and others are taken from a rich background and they are given the same education and after, their, and after their education they get to have same jobs, do you want to tell me that poverty will not reduce? Actually, poverty will reduce by 39%. These is a research done by the Global Partnership for Education. The United National Assembly last month shows that for growth to reduce poverty, it needs to overcome inequality by improving the life of the poor and marginalizing the most. And this can only be achieved by, and this can only be achieved through education. Thank you. First proposal, you have three minutes to present your case. Education is essential but not sufficient and enough to overcome poverty, let alone eradicating it. I, Hanan Mahmoud, representing California Secondary School, ready and only willing to oppose the motion that states poverty eradication can only be, can, it's the only way to eradicate more by quality education. I do, I, do, I, do, I do not refuse this motion, but I have other reasons because this is not the only reason. I don't have this one. Poverty is a complex phenomenon that requires fulfillment of the five elements of capital, e.g. natural, social, physical, physical, human, and financial, all which can achieve through quality. It's not the only quality can achieve by that one. Alternatively, we can raise minimum wage. A research done by Washington Post on January 4th, 2014, found out that raising minimum wage by 10% reduces 2.4% higher minimum wage leads to significant post in income. On to my second point, my, microfinancing. Let me define what is microfinancing. It is the offering to poor people so that to project or to help and support themselves and their families too. Beyond ending, Beyond Ending Poverty, a new book published by the World Bank found out that microfinance institutions have had sustained benefits over two decades in reducing poverty and increasing, and increasing income. For example, we have a good example in Bangladesh. Microcredit accounted for a 10% reduction in rural poverty. In, in rural poverty in Bangladesh, over that time, many microfinance Microfinance lifted 2.5 million Bangladeshi from the rank of poor. Also, countries like US, UK also offer this type of the system. Comprehensive humanitarian strategy, that's the third point. Developed nations own efficient regular humanitarian assistance policy, spearheaded by the government's own agency. This agency deal with nutrition, housing projects, cabinet cri combating crisis to fight poverty levels and increase changes of better living standards in slum and camps. For example, is the Tika of Turkey. On to my opponents, I would like to tell you, let's cross the bridge and shake hand with me by opposing the motion. 
because education, quality education is not the only way. We have many ways, such as microfinancing, raising minimum wage, gender equality, and many more. Thank you. Second proposal, you have three minutes for your rebuttal. My name is Khadija Hussein from Don Bosco Secondary School, ready to propose the motion that states poverty can be eradicated by offering quality education. First and foremost, I would like to start by opposing my opponents. She said that microfinancing has helped in reducing poverty. Yeah, it might help it. But let me ask you something. When you give a poor person money, in the name of lifting that person from poverty, then that will not help them because they don't know how to manage it, how to finance it, how to plan for it because they are not being given education. Now that's where education comes in. It tells you when you have this, how to use it, how to plan for it, how to minimize wastage. Because if you give a poor person money, he might spend it in one day. Trust me, you have to see that. Now, to my points. The first one is starting by Malcolm Forbes' quote, uh, like, quote, when he states that the purpose of education is to release, is to release empty minds and to open Mind. This means that you open perspectives for them. You change their rationale. We all know that we have a type of poverty called mindset. It's not only about food. It's not only about material possession. Because let's look at Kibera. Let's look at these slums. They have food. They have shelter. They have clothing. But the thing is, they don't have quality education. It will, they, they think they, ha they can stay in that situation for good. If they're given quality education, it will broaden their perspective and tell them, no, this is not your life and you can be raised from here. It will shape their minds. Let's take a case study of Singapore and Malaysia, which was a research done in UON. Singapore and Malaysia were at par with Kenya in the 1960s. But now, let's look where are Singapore and Malaysia? They are on the top. They are economically grown, and they are, they are in the process of eradicating poverty. Now, if now our country, Kenya, the problem is with our country, Kenya, you might say we have education, why is poverty still there? The problem is there is no quality education. It's quantity education. It's just learning, learning, but it's not taught in a qualitative way. To my next point, research done by Global Partnership for Education states that 1.71 million people can be lifted up from poverty if only children from primary schools left, children from primary schools knew the basic reading and writing skills. Now imagine if they offered quality 100% education, now poverty will be eradicated. Another thing, it's the quality education will give them knowledge, skills. In this world of innovation and technology advancement, we need to take these poor people to the schools and give them quality education to give them the knowledge and the skills to innovate and come up with ideas they can share with the world and they will rise up, trust me. Now, my name is Khadija Hussein. I would like you all to join me and say that poverty can be eradicated by quality education. Thank you. Second opposer, you have three minutes for your rebuttal. Greetings to all. At no point while I am making my submission. Will I dispute the vital role played by quality education in eradicating poverty? I don't deny education eradicates poverty. However, don't forget that education is not the only way. That's where the trap lies. We have multitudes of other factors which need to be considered as well. Standing in front of you is Mufsin Shafinur from California Secondary School, ready and only willing to oppose the motion that says poverty eradication can only be achieved by offering quality education. My worthy opponents repeat it over and over, and they say quality education, quality education. We also say not only quality education. We have many other ways to solve this prolonged poverty in the developing countries. 
quality education without a proper employment strategy in a country cannot eradicate poverty. A research done by the British Council in Nigeria says that the employment rate for university graduates 23 is higher than that for primary, secondary school leavers. You see, quality education is there. Drop out, a graduate, no difference. It doesn't depend on the quality of education. Reducing poverty through employment, we need to consider three factors. Generate, generate employment, we also need to make labor market more efficient, increase employability rates. In addition to this, we can also solve this problem of poverty through distribution of resources. Equal distribution of resources marginalizes regions, inhabits those people in a circle of poverty. When government spends resources equally in improving infrastructure that facilitate trade with which create job hands, household income and leaders of population get rid of poverty. When the government utilizes its resources, it equally distributes its resources. It, it can facilitate the trade, create job for the youth. At the same time, we will increase the household income, which will lead the population to get rid of poverty. We can eliminate poverty, we can eradicate it and get rid of it by using those many factors. According to KMBS, past 2013, post implementation of equalization fund, countries were marginalized and had large population linguishing in poverty. But since when they distributed their resources equally, they have realized there is a drop. There is a decrease of the level of the poverty. They realized that 5% of the poverty levels has dropped right from 2013 up to 2018. So we don't need to do great things so that we become great people. Let us do small things in a great way and think twice. Let us sit somewhere and think twice that and come up with other factors apart from education. Education has failed as we can see here. Let us use the other factors that I have mentioned. Thank you. For the question session, the proposers have been asked, if you look at Botswana, their literacy levels are among the highest in Africa, yet they have one of, some, one of the weakest economies in Africa. Yet in Kenya, which has high illiteracy levels compared to Botswana, still has one of the strongest economies in Africa. So they have been asked to elaborate what exactly is the relation between education and poverty. The opposers have been asked to give examples of countries where quality education was offered, but poverty levels were still seen to be high. Proposal number three, you have three minutes to answer the question. Standing before you is Kali Siad representing Don Bosco Secondary School. I would like to answer the question raised. Botswana have more literate people compared to Kenya, yet their economy is lower than the people of Kenya, right? This proves that the problem is really in the education. It's not just education, it's quality education we're looking for. Those people might have a fault in the education, yet that proves that no, long, no matter how much, like no matter how good the economy is, without quality education, there's nowhere you can go. There's literally nowhere you can go. I would like to also correct my opponent here, who said that comparing the people, the university people, and the people who finished, who dropped out of school, they have the same jobs. Don't you know this is a world of connections and credentials? Your credentials prove much less than your connections. You have to have better connections than your credentials. The problem in this world is the quality education that many people are lacking. If you get the right education, that means that you don't, you open your mindset, you open yourself to the possibility that maybe even if like this person doesn't have a connection, this person's credentials might help you. Moving on to my point, I would like to add on the motion by stating that the people, in, the people in many countries like Nigeria, 
Nigeria was a country who had very low economy, but because they invested more in education, they invested more in education so their people were able to tell between how to use and utilize the available scarce resources compared to countries that have low education standards like Zambia. Although they have more, although they have more resources, they, don't, they are still in poverty, not knowing why. Sadoposa, you have three minutes to answer the question. Excuse me, I have some problem in the throat, so I hope you will bear with me. So, inviting a cat is not the only means to kill a rat. There are many parts to eradicate poverty. The, well, um, Abdul Basit Abdullah Sheikh from California Secondary School resolutely opposing the motion that in the states poverty eradication can only be achieved by offering quality education. Let me start by answering the question. You are asking us for examples, but what you need to understand is, is that we are not against that quality education is one of the means of eradicating poverty. But what you need to get is there are many other ways so nowhere in our submissions where did we say that quality education, a place that has quality education, there was high poverty or it has increased poverty. Understand what you are talking about first. Above that, we have access to healthcare. The proportional connection between health, productivity, and Poverty eradication is evident and crystal clear. Prioritization of healthcare. Quality medication is one of the surest paths to prosperity and poverty alleviation. Why? Because healthy people can work, produce, and, and live better life. You cannot compare them with a society that's dying of diseases and other, fa and other factors. On top of that, we have gender equality. This is achieved when women and men enjoy the same rights and opportunities in all sectors of the society. Both women, that includes economic participation and decision making. Both women and men should be employed, elected, given access to finance, and paid well and fairly. Empowerment of women, access to performing platform, access to performing platform and provision of necessary tools is a way to utilize a human capital that represents over half of the half of the world's population, hence lifting the economic and eliminating poverty. In conclusion, I believe my teammates and I have provided you with enough evidence that quality education is not the only way to alleviate or eliminate poverty. So, feel most welcome to cross the stage. I rest in Proposition, you have one minute to wrap up your case. My name is Khadija Hussein from Dombosco Secondary School. Here to propose the same motion that states poverty can be eradicated only by quality education. First, I would like to oppose my opponents here. What he said is there are other ways of eradicating poverty. That's, that's not a lie. There, it's there. But without quality education, quality education is at the platform. It is at the far, it is at the top. It, is, it should be the first priority to be given. Let me ask you something. When you talk about health, when you say let's provide health for these poor people, and then, at the same time, they don't know how to prevent. We go to school, we are taught biology. We are taught we can prevent this disease by this way. We can cure this disease in this way. When you see these symptoms, you know it is this disease. 
Another thing you said is women empowerment. I think women empowerment, that's through education. Now, I strongly stand to still, to, to still support the motion that says poverty eradication can be done only by quality education. Thank you. Opposition, you have one minute to close your case. I never expected that my opponent would support me. She said there are other factors. Thank you for supporting us. Premature, predispossessed. This motion was dead in the womb even before it saw the light. They say quality education is the only way. We have listed and could not exhaust proper humanitarian strategy, gender equality, microfinancing, raising minimum wages, access to health care, proper employment strategy, equal distribution of resources. We have listed all those, and there are many others. Overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity, equal quality education. It is an act of justice. It is the protection of a fundamental human right. The right to dignity and life, it is the right for the educated or uneducated. Thank you. Don Bosco Secondary. I liked the argument that you brought out that it's not only about education, it's about quality education. And I like that argument from that point where you say you don't just offer any education, but you must offer quality education. The first speaker, Samira, I would caution you next time, don't get your proofs from Wikipedia sources. As you know, Wikipedia is not reliable. So when you say anything to do with Wikipedia, that's not uh, a good thing. So find sources from other places. Then I was also discouraged because you didn't use all your time, uh, which for me, I looked at it as a disadvantage. The second speaker, Khadija, uh, amazing. She really rebattled well whatever had been said by the first speaker of the opposing side. She brought out the issue of education as being very important. She talked of poverty in the mind and quoted uh, Mandela. Then she also argued that it is not only about education, but quality education. When it comes to the third uh, proposal, she had a good rebuttal, stuck on quality education, but again, did not use all of her time, which is not good. To California, Hanan, I like the fact that you started by telling us that poverty is a complex agenda, so we cannot just look at addressing it within one angle. However, the examples that you gave were very good. Apart from the microfinancing, it could have been easily cross-examined because somebody would have asked, how would we teach people about finance if they don't go to school first to get some of this education? But the, the submissions are well done. So you kindly just want to look at your coherency and flow so that you're not distracted at all by anything. And that comes as well to Shafi. Shafi, we don't, you don't want to appear like you're reading too much, okay? So sometimes you want to master that by trying to as well... Uh, uh, probably practice more so that when you come to the stage you will not uh, go back to your notes uh, because we want to also see your expressions. Remember, we're also looking at your non-verbals as well to us. Nonetheless, I think you did very well and gave a very good uh, rebuttal uh, to, to the teams. Abdullahi, I think your submission was about healthcare, that if we deal with healthcare, we'll be more healthy now to work and as, as a result then, there will be no poverty. So we can start from healthcare. And the fact that you came in here not even feeling well, I think that gives it a better point as well, is it? All the best to both teams, we wish you well. We have the results with us. We win some and we learn some. And today, we have with 68% California Secondary School. Please appreciate them. And Don Bosco Secondary School with 69% making them the winners of our debate today. Congratulations to both schools, a job well done. A great man once said, we are the change we seek. Let's be that change by championing the implementation of sustainable development goals as we aim to make Kenya a better place. I've been your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperanza Kapanga. See you next time.